Well, we're going to do something completely different today and uh, show you how to make some carpenter bee traps. I, I wasn't going to video this, but uh, if people are watching videos of uh, rescues of antique equipment, they, uh, they may very well have carpenter bee problems too. So, I've got a 4x4 four four here sitting on my old buzz saw. This would have been a lot easier if the buzz saw ran. But uh, marked them off in uh, four inch increments plus an eighth for saw blade thickness. It really doesn't matter. It's completely arbitrary. You can make them as tall as you want. Um, and just chopped them off with a sawzall. I mean, they really don't have to be perfect. Um, you just want a relatively flat surface, which I'll, I'll show you why later. So, got a bunch more stacked up on the fender of the Solfordson here. And uh, we start putting some holes in it and get these traps built. So I'm just gonna do this in my old drill press here. Um, a lot of guys freehand this with a pistol drill, but uh, being a machinist, that kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit. So I did wipe the table down with uh, some brake cleaner and a paper towel. I didn't want to get any uh, oil or residue that might make the wood smell funny that would deter the bees. So we'll just get this cranked down and uh, put the main hole down the center of it. It's going to be three quarters of an inch diameter. All right, so basically all I did for the height of the table is I brought it to the point where the bottom of the quill travel is about three quarters of the way through the block. That way these will all repeat. The bores will all be the same depth and then the holes that we're going to put on each side at an angle will line up with the bottom of the three quarter inch bore in the center. You can eyeball the middle of the block. It doesn't have to be super critical, but you want it about as close to the middle as you can get it. So we'll get these holes drilled and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so here's step two. Um, they say 45 degrees for, uh, for the holes in the sides for them to crawl into. I think anywhere from 30 to 45 would probably be fine. Um, this setup is really excessive for what we're doing. Again, you could do this with a pistol drill, but uh, hey, why not have it be repeatable? So, I'm set up at uh, 45 degrees here. I've got a stubby drill in here so it doesn't flex too much. Um, you're going to want to puppy into this fairly slow until you get the tip buried. Um, then you'll be able to plow through. Um, and basically these 45 degree holes that the carbon bees are going to crawl into, they're going to meet this 3 quarter inch hole uh, for them to be able to pass into the trap. on all four sides. Okay. Well, we just got the last one done. So now we need to move on with uh, getting the jars made for these things. Upper. So the next thing you want to do is uh, make a small punch to put a three quarter inch hole in the lids of the jars that we're going to use on the bottoms of these traps. Uh, I just sharpened this on the bench grinder. It's a good idea to uh, do it vertically so it pulls the chip away from the cutting edge. It's not perfect but it's pretty sharp and we're just going to pound it through the jar lid. So, we'll try this out and see how it works. Okay, so we got all the holes punched in the lids. Um, I'm just using Tostitos jars and some old jelly jars. You can use mason jars, whatever you want. I will say that uh, five lids fairly effectively dulled out this punch. Um, next time, if I do more of these, I may consider trying to uh, do a little bit of redneck hardening on the, the cutting edge of the punch just by heating it and quenching it in waste oil. It's worth a shot. Um, I've cheated that way before and had it work fairly well. Um, 
So basically all we're going to do is we're going to slap the lid on the bottom of the block here around the three-quarter inch opening and uh, we're just going to nail it on there with some small brad nails. Okay, so now that you've got your lids nailed onto your trap, the final step is being able to hang this thing, so I'm just using some small eye hooks. Uh, I like to drill a pilot hole, so I'm using a drill here that's about the shank thickness of the eye hook, and I'll pop that right in the center of the top, thread these in, and get them hung up and see how well they work. Well, that's a wrap. I ran out of eye hooks, so I had to dig through the junk drawer and improvise. But uh, this is what they look like all done. Pretty simple. So we'll go get some of these hung up on the barn and see if we can kill some carpenter bees before they wreck the barn. Okay, so I got one hanging here on a shepherd's hook. And. Another one up on the barn door track here. I just want to see if I can show you some of the destruction these things cause. Look at this header board. It's right full of holes. These are where woodpeckers are trying to get the carpenter bee larva out. I mean, this thing is just Swiss cheese. It's absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully we can uh, trap and kill some of these things. Well, we're a couple weeks in on the carpenter bee traps, and uh, I don't know if you can see them in there, but uh, we have caught a lot. They don't seem to like that middle one for some reason, which is interesting, but uh, these two on the end have got a ton of carpenter bees in them. There's still a couple um, going in and out of the beam, so going to spray the beam with uh, Carpenter Bee Killer and see if we can kind of deter them from going in there and maybe uh, tempt them with the traps a little bit. But overall, I'm, I'm very pleased. These things are working absolutely awesome. Uh, I would recommend them to anybody that's got a, a Carpenter Bee problem. The only thing I find strange is why they're not going in that middle jar. Um, it seemed like uh, as soon as one of these jars got one bee in it, they had 10, so I don't know whether it's a, a scent thing. I don't know if I should take a bee out of one of them and put them in another as bait. I'm not really sure. Um, if anybody has any experience or opinions on this, feel free to post it in the comments. I'd be curious to hear. But all in all, great success. These things are working very well.